Hey everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program to infinity and beyond. This is going to be our second attempt to send these Kerbals into space. And you know what? Honestly, our first mission, despite the fact that we didn't actually succeed, was kind of successful. It sounds like I'm doing some double talk there. But really our only problem, except for the time that I deliberately crashed it into the water and killed all our astronauts, uh, was the fact that... Actually, let's uh, load spacecraft. Let's load Northern Lion Mark 1 here. Um, yeah, the only problem with this rocket ship... Select, please was that it didn't seem to have enough kind of rocket power to get it out of the Earth's atmosphere. So I think our logical next step with this, and a lot of you people who are familiar with this game are probably already laughing your asses off at how wrong I likely am, uh, but I think our next logical step is basically just to stack as many solid fuel boosters as we possibly can. I mean, these... Let's look at the description for the solid fuel boosters quickly, because it'll kind of explain what the hell they are in case I did a bad job of it last episode. Well, considered by some to be little more than a trash bin full of boom, the RT-10, aka stack or solid fuel, fuel booster, is used in many space programs whenever the need to save cash is greater than the need to keep astronauts alive. Oh, that isn't what I'm looking for, but <laughs> they do give us a lot of raw power. The only thing that's bad about them, well, I guess they have many things that are not great about them, but one of the things that is the worst about them is that you can't actually put these engines out until they actually uh, run out of fuel. So I'm going to stack, like, there's 12 decouplers here. This should allow me to put... Another four sets of three solid fuel boosters. I mean, this is going to make us pretty damn heavy. But hopefully, you know, the sheer force of, of will that I have is going to be enough to move me forward. So let's put these decouplers on. Then we will put these engines on. Wow, I mean, this looks like something that I would have built out of connects when I was like 10 years old. It's maybe 12 is too much. 12 extra engines might be a little too much weight. Uh, but we'll try maybe 9 extra engines and see if that works. If not, uh, we might find ourselves in a difficult situation. But anyway, like I'm not an engineer by trade. I'm a video game player. You know what? Fuck it. This thing can handle a couple more engines. Or a couple more boosters anyway. So let's toss these on here. Couple more of those, one more of these. All right, and one more set of solid fuel boosters. And then we'll try this bitch out at the launch pad where I imagine that it's probably gonna explode in a, a fiery hailstorm of pure death and destruction and sadness, but <laughs> thank God we got the aerodynamic fins on there. Um, we'll call this one Northern Lion Mark II. Save. Let's launch it. I don't see what could possibly go wrong here. As we get to the launch pad, it's certainly substantially taller than our last version. We will not show the tutorial. And I guess five, four, three, two, one. We have lift, lift off, sort of. Uh, I don't, I guess it doesn't have the enough power to go. Oh God, it's falling down. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Uh, disengage, just, oh, okay. Well, that was about 10 seconds long. Uh, I think maybe we want to take off maybe a set of these boosters. That could be the problem that happened there. And we'll take off the decouplers as well. And then we'll try it again. We'll still technically call this one Mark II. And then we'll see what we have in the launch this time. Three, two, one. Okay, we have liftoff. Very, very slow, tenuous liftoff. I have engaged SAS already to ensure... It is hopefully a relatively consistent flight upwards, although I can see my ship bending a little bit already. There we go. Okay, we're all right. These are about to run out of fuel, so let's do a... Oh, God, God, God. No, no, no. No, no, no. We'll do a swift decoupling here. Okay, we're still climbing. I, my guess is that we are probably going to beat our record for altitude, but I don't think that this is going to give us enough to get out of the atmosphere. Clearly, I need uh, some way to kind of get my, like, weight to function ratio better. Like, I need to bring my weight down and my thrust up somehow, but I'm not sure how to do Oh, God, I forgot that it was running out of fuel. Okay. So we're already, like, 3,000 meters up in the air. That's three kilometers. You know, a couple miles, maybe. We're, we're tilting a little bit here, but I think SAS is going to be able to mostly hold this under control. I think these are gonna run out of fuel in a second. How high did we get in the air last time? I can't even remember. It was like 16 kilometers, maybe. 
Okay, now we got our last set of rocket boosters. Obviously, we have the least weight at this point, so this should cause us to go upwards even faster. Eight kilometers above the Earth's surface, but we're still like... <laughs> Don't airplanes go higher than this? You know, like 30,000 feet? I guess that's only like 10,000 meters, so we are probably higher than an airplane at this point. But uh, we're not going to get too much higher than our previous best. Uh, we were going like almost a kilometer a second there by the end of it. So we'll just let this let this continue to tick up here. Oh, I should disengage just so I can continue my maximum like thrust upwards here. Or my maximum momentum, I should say. 27 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Am I in, am I in space yet? Am I in orbit? Have I exited the atmosphere? I can see stars. I believe that is the, the planet that I'm trying to get to, actually. Now, I think uh, a considerable problem for me right now might be man i can see my house from here um might be oh we are in orbit awesome <laughs> so i guess we've we've exited the atmosphere but for some reason we are still slowing down and may actually be our altitude is still going up so we've exited the earth's atmosphere but i don't know what we do from this point on because I didn't attach anything else to this to give it more thrust so we're just kind of floating here in our death trap I guess I could like launch my parachute and see what see what happens but I'm kind of trying to see if we're gonna just like go through re-entry and if we do uh, I didn't really plan on escaping the Earth's atmosphere so I didn't put any like heat shielding or anything in, in, in my ship but we definitely seem to be descending back towards Earth but, you know, it was all worth it for this this gorgeous view. I think, but we're descending incredibly slowly. Is there any way that I can I can time warp here? Yes, let's, let's warp ourselves up. Can I warp faster than two times while in the atmosphere? Okay, let's... I, I sent our parachute out, but I'm not sure that's going to help us. That might actually just burn us up in the atmosphere. Oh, man, we are descending. Aim for the water. You can still survive this. I'm positive. Aim for the water. It's only a 25 kilometer drop. You're gonna be fine. I like how Hazy Kerman is like, fuck this, and Danwig Kerman is like, fuck this. Oh, but for a second, Burford Kerman was like, this is kinda cool. I'm into this. Alright, let's we're go we're dropping pretty damn quickly here. Let's take our warp back to one time. Eh, actually we can probably afford to keep it at two times here. Now, I think we're going to touch down in the water. Which may actually mean that we're going to live. And this will be considered sort of a successful mission, despite the fact that... I don't know, nothing really seemed to get done. I mean, we made it into, the, into, into orbit, which is awesome. But, uh, you know, once we got there, we kind of ran out of power. So I need more power, definitely, for my next run. Let's... There we go. Time warp one times. I think we're going to touch down totally fine. These guys are super happy. The Kerbals have reached Earth's upper atmosphere, entered orbit. I apologize if I'm using improper astronomy terms. Uh, I'm not an astronomer by trade, or an engineer, or, you know, an astrophysicist or anything like that. I'm just doing my damnedest here, based on the one Isaac Asimov nonfiction book I read in fourth grade about the, the Milky Way. So, our guys did survive anyway, so I consider that a, a mild success. Let's go back to... Our, uh, we'll end the flight, take a look at our what happened here. Yeah, I guess, I'm trying to see if there was anything like where it confirms where we entered orbit. Mm, not really, okay. But let's look at this, we did achieve 44 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Not that many G-forces, we traveled 88 kilometers, it's pretty good. I'm down with that, let's go back to our vehicle assembly ability, vehicle assembly building, and we'll save this as Northern Lion Mark II. And that has been today's episode of Kerbal Space Program 2 Infinity and Beyond. What did we learn from this? Uh, uh, like, we need to separate this right here, I think, and we need to stick, like, some extra jet power here so that we can actually control our command module once we get into the atmosphere. Because this is enough power to get us into orbit anyway, but we need a little bit more to push us forward uh, once we, like, enter the upper atmosphere. And if I add any more solid fuel boosters, we will just explode on the launch pad. So for now... This is pretty good. We'll save it as Northern Lion Mark II. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in Apollo 3.